Hello people of the internet, turns out that a few weeks ago I made a Dell XPS 13 review for students which ended up getting quite a good amount of views. Within, I actually asked you guys if you wanted to see a MacBook M1 comparison and you all seemed to agree to it. And so I decided to make this video and clear some doubts and see which device is the ultimate laptop for your school needs. Okay, so this is it. Build quality and looks have their major differences, starting with the chassis itself. The MaxBooks enclosure is made with a low carbon aluminum all around which feels so compact and sturdy. The XPS enclosure however can be said to contain 75% aluminum, leaving the rest to a carbon fiber coat with rubber. But Apple's laptop in my opinion feels like a whole piece of metal at 2.8 pounds which from experience makes me feel safer when this gets thrown into a school bag. It just overall feels like a better piece of tech even though it is larger, less portable and maybe lighter depending on which XPS model you have. Lifting both screens can be done with one single hand so you know you're good for those rush moments you have when sitting down in class while sipping a coffee. Inside, both of these devices are very different, starting with the fact that the XPS has the better display in my opinion. Apple continues making these chunky bezels, meanwhile Dell provides us with this infinity edge display with these incredible razor thin bezels. My Dell of choice happens to have a resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels in contrast to the MacBook which has a display resolution of 2560 by 1600 pixels. But never let numbers fool you. From what my eyes can see, this Windows device screen is sharper and contains a better anti-reflective coat. They both have a 16 by 10 screen aspect ratio so you have a little bit more room towards the bottom within these 13 inch compact laptop screens. As for the colors and brightness, well they are very similar although with a 4K option it tends to be a lot more color accurate. Dell does offer a screen touch option if you really wish to have it but in my opinion for school it's not worth it. Although, is the webcam still a priority for you guys now that you're going back to school? Just know that these webcams are located on top of their displays and are both 720p but look quite different as you guys can see. The MacBook's camera handles brightness a lot better and it is a lot more clearer. As for the audio, they are both relatively the same. Regardless, the build quality of the screen on both devices is great. There is very little flex on both displays and the wobble when typing on their keyboards is very minimal. Although Dell in my opinion has by far the best keyboard right now between these two. At first touch, these plastic keycaps feel like they have a nice little matte coat on them for that less glossy touch and their size and travel is much better in my opinion. I've never been a fan of the touch bar so it's nice to have physical function keys on a machine instead. Which by the way I was really impressed to see that the fingerprint sensor was as fast at authenticating as the one on the MacBook. Moving below there has never been anything better than Apple's trackpads. They are by far more superior in terms of touch, size and accuracy. It has this great haptic feedback on the first touch unlike any other Windows laptop which has this empty touch to it. However, I am personally a fan of the texture the XPS trackpad seems to have. One major feature that the MacBook also takes away is the fact that these are the best speakers on a laptop as of right now. The science division had a technical name, we just called them elementals. Versions of them exist across our mythologies. Turns out the myths are real. Like Thor. Thor was a myth and they are well positioned compared to the XPS 13, have insanely great bass and don't have the crackle the XPS recently started producing. Regardless guys, in terms of speakers, the MacBook wins. But in terms of ports, you'll quickly realize how the MacBook just truly sucks in this department. Not to forget, but right now, the laptop currently doesn't support dual screen displays. Compared to the XPS, we have an integrated dongle for USB-A support dual USB-C ports on both sides and a micro SD card reader. Not much of a difference although this time we do have support for dual screen monitors. Turning things around if you are a lap user you'll notice that the rubber feet on the XPS are better positioned. Mainly because it stretches along the device unlike the MacBook which has them on the corners. I personally find it was a much better experience because the Windows laptop tends to slip less. As for performance, I want to make something clear. When people say M1 it simply translates to the fact that this is a system chip that contains the CPU, the GPU, the RAM and other things such as the neural engine processor which runs artificial intelligence programs. As a result, Apple have found ways to make the CPU inside the M1 yield great performance without having to sacrifice power efficiency, which is why the M1 MacBook has great battery life. 
Comparing this to the XPS with a traditional computer architecture like the i7, after one hour of Chrome browsing and video playback on Netflix, providing the laptops were fully charged and on full performance mode for the XPS, the Dell was down to 88% and the MacBook to 97%. Hopping on Minecraft for another hour, we did drop off about 25% on the Dell, and after gaming on the MacBook for another hour, we dropped off about 18%. And if I was mixing some casual coding along Spotify and Chrome being open with a couple of taps on both machines for another hour or so, I did get a final battery life of 63% for the MacBook and 47% for the XPS, which clearly shows how much better the battery life on the MacBook is compared to the Dell. Very important when you are at school for long periods of time. Plugging the XPS to power like any Windows laptop will increase its performance which is something the MacBook doesn't need to deal with. So if you need the power, you don't have to constantly seek for a wall socket at school. As for the SSDs, both of these machines share more or less the same results. So reading and writing files to or from your computer will feel much faster which is a big plus as a student. Keep in mind that for the following test, this macOS laptop is going at an advantage since we have 4 more cores compared to the Windows laptop, although we are rocking the same amount of RAM. So the other day, my friend was actually curious about how this Apple laptop would perform with software such as Photoshop, Lightroom, and Illustrator. And now that these natively run on M1, the experience is extremely enjoyable and editing content on this is just satisfying. It did take me about 30 minutes to edit all the assets for this video on both machines and I did notice the MacBook and XPS performing relatively the same for things such as importing these four pictures and using the brush tool along reflecting its changes. But opening Lightroom files on Photoshop and even using some AI to automatically generate some portion of the image to my liking was significantly better. Although exporting times were pretty similar on both these machines, since she is currently starting her new arts degree, this is definitely a solid choice over the XPS 13, mainly because of the battery life and the ability for M1 to handle more complex tasks. But this might not tell the full story, so for those who like numbers and want to see how much more powerful the CPU on the MacBook is, while well, running Cinebench R23 yields single scroll results that were 321 points superior and multi-core results that were 3590 points better than the XPS. Overall, the MacBook in terms of CPU yields a better ROI. On the productivity side, if I wanted to push the GPU, this meant opening a portion of this video on both laptops. Premiere Pro is one of the heaviest softwares in the world and even my $5,000 machine can sometimes struggle at handling it. Playback at full quality with 4K footage on both laptops can be smooth, but I do have to say on render effects are better handled on the MacBook. So if I was grabbing Premiere Pro templates from Storyblocks and importing them into the timeline, the XPS couldn't particularly keep up as well as the M1, which means that if you are studying graphic and web design, you might be interested in checking out our long-term sponsor, Storyblocks. Storyblocks can help you save your videos as it is a platform that provides an awesome subscription service with a massive demand-driven library that gives you access to unlimited stock downloads of high-quality royalty-free stock footage, which also includes motion backgrounds, After Effects templates, and overlays which are my favorite. I noticed a lot of you enjoyed my iPad review cinematic video which was particularly edited with the help of their overlay smoke screen. They also deliver great sound effects that help me recover sound and make my scenes feel immersive. So if you ever happen to be out of footage for say, a MacBook review, you can quickly search for MacBooks, download your 4K file and import it to your timeline. And as you can see, this 4K file also runs smoothly at full resolution. So if you truly would like to help yourself edit better videos, and continue telling a better story, head over to storyblocks.com slash and check out their flexible subscription plans to fulfill your need. Thank you Storyblocks for sponsoring this review and allowing us to further test our devices. To stress test our RAM, I decided to open the same amount of Chrome tabs on both devices with the same Premiere Pro project and the same assets on Photoshop and Lightroom. And while both devices were running at 16GB of RAM, you truly start seeing the power of the unified RAM within the MacBook since it wasn't as laggy when jumping on Premiere Pro. And on top of that, both Chrome and Premiere Pro ended up crashing on the Dell. But there's one thing we haven't done yet and that's gaming which aside from the productivity aspect will push the GPU on these machines as well. Gaming on 49 at 1280p resolution on the MacBook does in fact provide a good gaming experience. And for the XPS at 1200p 
25 frames per second was the average frame rate which was good enough just like the MacBook. But when it came to playing Steam games like CSGO, both devices were providing a bit of a laggy gaming experience. Also, if you are planning to play something like Cyberpunk, don't expect to get the smoothest of frame rates at all. Although I did take advantage and measure the thermals on this which yield around 45 degrees on average. And yes, it did kick its dual fans which were quite loud. However, between these two I was expecting the M1 to be the quieter one with its single fan. But surprisingly it wasn't as hot as the Dell XPS 13 yielding temperatures of 38 degrees on average. Coming from a MacBook Pro 15 inch I'd say this is an extreme upgrade. Obviously running ARM architectures allow you to cool down your devices in contrast to x86 so this is to be expected. Which allows me to enter the following question, do they thermal throttle? As for the MacBook I can confidently say it doesn't mostly when you see core temperatures of 48 degrees while doing demanding tasks. On the other hand, with core CPU temperatures of 59 degrees on average, the Dell XPS 13 dead thermal throttle from time to time. However, it definitely took quite a lot to achieve so. Also, if you currently are a software engineering or computer science student, I do recommend sticking to Windows just because of the way most curriculums are made. I do notice a lot of universities deliver their tutorials on Windows when it comes to lab classes and teachers seem to hate Mac for some super odd reason. Although don't worry, because with Windows you can easily transform your machine into a Linux platform for development. Either way, you can always just dual boot Ubuntu which you will most likely have to do if you take a course like networking. I don't know how you guys feel about Apple but for students this is my go to. Just make sure your university or college program requirements allow you to use macOS. Even though it emulates some programs with Rosetta, don't worry, I use programs that are not natively supported and run perfectly fine. Now, remember when I said don't let the numbers fool you? Well, having 16GB of RAM on this particular machine is not at all necessary unless you're an art student and you're getting into video production. Overall, this machine lasts longer, runs quieter and handles a lot more with 8GB of RAM. On the other hand, the XPS 13 is a laptop to consider if you are gearing towards Windows. I do recommend sticking to 16GB of RAM on Windows machines, but overall this Dell laptop has better ports, supports dual monitors and you do get a bigger storage at base prices. In my opinion, the Dell has a better keyboard so if you care about typing in class then this might be a go to for you. Regardless, if you are a student, I recommend the base model of the MacBook Pro if you are gearing towards macOS and if you need Windows then avoid getting the touch version and get the i7 with 16GB of RAM and 512GB of storage. Let me know in the comments section down below which one you'd rather pick. I am late for my iPhone 13 Pro Max pickup, I will see you all soon, take care.